Hey there, folks. Let me make sure you hear me. Thank you for tuning in. <clears throat> Thank you for tuning in, tuning in to Cyber Career Strategies TV. So uh, I recently changed the name. I had been calling this show Teachable Tuesday for the past five years. So recently changed the name to Cyber Career Strategies TV. And uh, so let me give you a bit of background about what you're watching today and how it all came about just so that you have a better context of, uh, of what you're in for and the value that you're going to receive. So I started a group, a Facebook group, back in 2015 called InfoSec 101. The purpose of me starting InfoSec 101 was so that I could provide uh, advice and career strategies for those who are interested in getting into cybersecurity and transferring from many different fields, uh, from truck drivers. I've, I've helped uh, doctors, lawyers, um, many other architects and many uh, engineers and uh, just people who are on the help desk. There's people who have had very technical and highly technical backgrounds who didn't think that they were qualified to work in the cybersecurity industry, who I, who I was able to uh, show that they had all the skills and the makings and the workings of someone who uh, could jump right into the field very easily based on what they had already done. And with uh, many other uh, career fields as well, um, just showing people how to extract those details and those skills. But that was what the InfoSec 101 group was all about. It's about creating that synergistic community. Uh, started around 10 people. As of today, we're up to about 24,600 people in that group. Very synergistic group of individuals who make up uh, every level that you could imagine within the cybersecurity world. Uh, malware analysis. Uh, vulnerability management, digital forensics, uh, the the certification and authorization professionals, and you know general catch-all security analysts, security operations center analysts. We have also uh, you know cybersecurity blog writers, book writers, authors, course makers, uh, those who are making the courses for the uh, certification programs that you're taking, whether it be your CISSP. We have authors who have. Uh, uh, created courses for that, uh, your Security Plus, your Network Plus, your OSCP. We have uh, those who are passing the OSCP exams, as you saw in our previous show, uh, our, our, our man Derek, who, uh, you know, pushed through and finally accomplished the OSCP, who gave his wisdom nuggets on how that all works. So uh, what you're looking at now, Cyber Career Strategy TV, is that additional bonus and that additional value to uh, help you to strategize in your career. Um, so on this show, I bring on fellow cybersecurity professionals, career professionals who are helping others to, uh, who, are, who are definitely making a splash in the cybersecurity world in terms of the work that they're doing to help others and to, uh, you know, progress in their careers as well. So, you know, they're, uh, whoever I bring on, they're definitely, definitely inspirational and um, you know, have a lot of value to add and give um, today. Our guest. Let me uh, give you a bit of background before I bring our guest on the screen. So, our guest today is Katia Dean. Katia has a background in cybersecurity and engineering with an undergrad degree degree in electro electrical engineering and a master's degree in cybersecurity technology. Katia recently wrote a cybersecurity career strategy book inspired by her own experience successfully navigating her path into cybersecurity. And while I read the rest of that, let me put her book up on the screen so you can see that there. Um, and uh, so she wrote the book while navigating her own path into cybersecurity. The book also includes the experiences of several cybersecurity professionals and details the keys to their su career success in cybersecurity. The book is called The Struggle is Real, a blueprint to excelling into ci the cybersecurity discipline and will be the center of our discussion during this show. She is also founder of Katia Side Life LLC, a career guidance company geared to support the cybersecurity professional in navigating their career, advice, resume writing, LinkedIn profile optimization, as well as informative articles which shed insight on your career journey. Katia recently won the 2020 ISC Square Global Achievement Rising Star Award for the work she's done with her very popular website, Katia Side Life. Which, is, which, which has made significant impact and contribution to the information security field. All right, so let me bring Katia up on, this, on the screen here. Thank you for hey, joining everybody. us. Uh, say, something, some, say something, Katia, so we can uh, make sure that you 
that we hear you. Oh, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight. And I'm so excited and hopefully I inspire you all with my talk today. Absolutely. And we're we're very glad to have you. And, uh, you know, I've been following you for years and just looking at your progression through the cybersecurity world. And uh, when I saw your book coming out, I was like, I definitely have to interview her because she's on the move. She's doing a lot of great things and she definitely um, has a heart to share. And that was one of the things that really stands out about you is your heart to share with others, your experiences as you go through and as you as you not only go through, but as you grow through your uh, cybersecurity experiences. So uh, tell us a little bit about let's 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 take it from the from the top, because everybody, you know, when you talk about these journeys into cybersecurity, everybody is coming from, you know, different backgrounds and experiences. So tell us a little bit about how you first uh, heard about, you know, technology and then cybersecurity. And we'll start there. Okay, well, way, way back in the day now. <laughs> I always was in in my college years, I always was in some type of technology major, but my my journey into technology, I actually struggled. That's why my book is called A Struggle. But um, I actually struggled a lot because I was that person that I was not good in math. I struggled in math. I also was not good in science, but I was a thinker. I was very analytical. And I said, it doesn't matter how hard or how much of a struggle I, I'm going to get through this. So throughout my college undergrad, I got my electronic engineering degree from Cleveland State University in 2013. During that time, I struggled seriously through all my math classes. I had to repeat math a couple of times. I also was on probation a couple of times, academic probation, but I turned it around and I actually graduated. I got on the dean's list. And then I eventually moved to Maryland because the job was not in Cleveland for engineering. So I ended up moving to Maryland. And while I was in Maryland, I actually was volunteering at this STEM event for young girls that was geared towards middle school girls and high school girls. And I was volunteering at the workshop and at appreciation night, they had the workshop videos going on. And it was this particular one about cybersecurity. And at this time, I didn't hear, I didn't know anything about cybersecurity. I didn't know what it was. So I said, okay, well, let me volunteer for this workshop so I could understand what it's about. And I volunteered for the workshop and during this workshop, the girls actually got the opportunity to, it was like a digital forensics course. So they actually had to find the code and gather the evidence from this computer system and then decode a message. Now, personally, I don't like programming, but I'm like, okay, maybe it's something else in cyber that I could use my previous experience into. So then I started doing research and one of my good friends had recommended, hey, University of Maryland University College is actually a good school. Maybe you should check that out. So I checked that out, attended the webinar and during our webinar, I actually realized that, oh, it's actually different areas in cybersecurity that I could use my skill set. And I ended up going and rolling into my master's program that I actually got done within a year. And I graduated with my master's in cybersecurity technology. So that's how I got into cybersecurity by volunteering through a STEM program. And that's a, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, especially that just volunteering part, because that is shows so much um, of you being a self starter and just showing that initiative. And I think that that's one of the key traits when I interact with someone who's new to the idea of cybersecurity and just acclimating themselves to the field, uh, you know, that self-starting, being willing to jump on Google to answer their own questions before, you know, coming to the community and asking, you know, the various questions. We always welcome, you know, questions, but definitely we want to encourage people to do that initial research on their own because uh, the nature of the cybersecurity field is going to be all about, you know, research. It's going to be all about doing their own due diligence and, um, you know, troubleshooting and so forth. That, I mean, that's the nature of our work is becoming um, a, a, a expert researcher uh, for all types of challenges. Right. Yes, very much. So, so. Uh, tell us the next step in your journey when you uh, 
when you went to land that first cybersecurity role? Well, you know what? Before you do that, I want to know a little bit about the uh, the workshop. So at a workshop and you were so you heard about cybersecurity, but you were already volunteering at the workshop to do what again? So my role was basically just the assistant to one of the leads. So I was the assistant to the lead and I basically was just assisting the girls and the instructions for the workshop. I didn't know what was going on either in the workshop. So I was so I was learning as well in this workshop with the girls. So we were both learning together. And I had just found it interesting at teaching them and actually learning along the way. So my role was just assisting them and learning at the same time. Awesome. Awesome. And um, um, how has it been in your experience navigating a field that is 11% women, 89% male dominated? It has been a journey. <laughs> I already knew when I had got my undergrad degree in electronic engineering, actually in any tech field, I already knew I was going to be the only girl in the class. I also knew that I was going to be the only black woman in the class. And sometimes I knew I was probably going to be the youngest as well. <laughs> so I was already prepared for that during my undergrad. So to me, it was a struggle. I had to navigate. I had to get out my shell a little bit more because I'm an introvert at heart. I really am. I'm an introvert at heart, but I know how to turn it on and turn it off. And I also know how to, as, as we already mentioned, if you do your research and people see that you have the initiative, you sometimes you will get a little bit of help along the way. Now, as we all know, you will have some haters along the way. People try to throw you up under the bus, but you will get through it. So just going through that, made me the person who I am today and I never give up and I had a lot of no's until I got some yeses. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, do you remember, uh, at the point when you realized cybersecurity was such a broad field, uh, with functions and roles to include non-technical governments, governance types of roles in addition to the many, uh, technical roles. So I actually, when I graduated with my master's, so most of my roles, so my background is electronic engineering, but most of my roles consist of system engineer, program analyst, a senior technical manager. So I'm, most of my day-to-day -day roles is me collaborating with different people, making sure their process is together. And I was like everyone else. I didn't think I was in cybersecurity, but my mentor, shout out to Dr. Carter, my mentor, Dr. Carter, she was actually my professor at UMUC, University of Maryland, University College. And what I appreciate her a lot is that she looked like me. So I actually had somebody to look up to that was a black woman like me that was in the same field as me. And she was actually willing to help me along the way. So she actually gave me the confidence like, hey, can I tell you are in cybersecurity? These are the transferable skills that you already have, and this is how you apply to cybersecurity. So once I finally figured that out, and then I conducted more research, and she would help me go out to cybersecurity events where I would network with other people, where I actually got to meet Dr. Masoor Hasib, which when I was in my master's program, he was the excuse me, the dean, the chair of that department, I actually got to meet him in person. And he's also my mentor too. So he helped me a lot. Well, he still helped me now. He helped me along all the time. Um, having a mentor is very important in your journey. Sometimes it will, it will come later in your journey. Like I didn't have a mentor when I was in my undergrad at all. I didn't get a mentor into my master's program. But when you are a mentee, you also have to put in a word. You cannot just be a giver, like give, 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 and you're not really, you know, you're not really doing anything. You just want to get all the answers, but you're not putting in the work. So you have to make sure if you were looking for a mentor that you want to put in the work as well as a mentee. And then also make sure that the mentor you're looking for is actually the same 
going the same career path as you. So for instance, if someone with a digital forensics background came to me and said, hey, can Tia can you be my mentor? I would say no, because my expertise is not digital forensics. I would point them into somebody who has a digital forensics background that could help them along the way. Because that's not my area of expertise. I'm not going to give you any wrong answers or I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. That's not me. Let me point you to somebody else that's on the same path as you. Okay. So uh, when it comes to mentor to mentee, you would say if someone's not in a, in that specialty, they would probably have to give like more of a surface level of guidance. Do you, do you feel like it could someone with, with a mismatch of specialty like that, what uh, do you feel like they can give more like a high level general direction? Yeah, it's very high level because with my resume business, I help people with all different educational backgrounds. I could help someone that has a nursing background trying to get into cyber. I don't really know too much about nursing, so I have to actually do my research to know a little bit about, okay, well, they're in the nursing field. How can the healthcare industry, what other security functions, cybersecurity functions can this person from a healthcare background translate into cyber. So with me, I'm very um, high level when it comes to people from other educational backgrounds. And if you're in the same path as me, which is the oversee and governance side of cybersecurity, which is in the NIST 800-181 document, which is my favorite document, this cybersecurity workforce publication, best thing on earth. That's my thing. <laughs> uh, I realized that was your favorite document after going oh, to your uh, your website. And I yeah. see you reference it often on LinkedIn as well. So yeah. I, I figured that was your favorite document. <laughs> yes. I think they need to pay me how much I uh, advertise it. <laughs> right. But or no, you, but you should get on like the, the board of editors for that document. I know, right? <laughs> I did. I, oh, was it last year? I think it was last year or this year. I can't remember now. I think it was last year. Um, They were actually asking for editors or con or comments for that publication. So I actually put my comments in. Hopefully they use them. Um, but yes, that's my favorite document. Awesome. Awesome. So getting to the main event of this interview, tell us. So how long had you been thinking about writing The Struggle is Real before you actually wrote it? And what were you going through that kind of got those thoughts turning over for you? Well, I started from my blog. So my blog had started in 2018 when I was struggling and trying to find employment. So what happened to me is that I found myself laid off 2018. A couple of I worked for lost a contract. I didn't I didn't have a backup plan. I tried to get a job before I was getting laid off, but it didn't happen. So even though I had my master's, I had my bachelor's and two STEM majors, by the way, and I also had six years of experience, I felt myself struggling. And I'm like, is something wrong with me? Why can't I find a job? And mind you, this also happened during the government shutdown. So I had the government shutdown. I'm trying to navigate my path. And I have my blogs already. And my mentor, Dr. C, Hope you out there. Dr. C had messaged me, said, Hey, can I tell you, you know, you have a you have enough content to write a book. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I really want to write a book. I'm not gonna write a book till next year. And I'm one of those people that if somebody tell me three times or they mention something to me three times, then I'm like, okay, I gotta do it. So it was like three times people kept saying, Can I tell you, you really need to write a book. You really need to write a book. You really need to write a book. So I ended up writing a book. Uh, May, May of this year. I ended up, I think it was May. I can't remember now. Everything runs so fast. I think it was May. May of this year, I ended up writing a book. Um, shout out to Joanna Udo because I was in her four week, four week. I got my ebook done in four weeks. I was in her four week created ebook course and she helped me along the way with staying on task. I had a lot of exercises to do for the whole book process. I had to figure out what cover I wanted. Shout out to my graphic guru marketing girl, Nia. She helped me with the design of the ebook. And also Melissa, she did the wonderful illustration that's in my ebook as well to capture the essence of my ebook. 
I'm loving the teamwork you got going on behind the scenes. Oh, teamwork all day. Te look, teamwork <laughs> made the dream work. Right. Exactly. 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 So let's jump into. Uh, so how do you how do you uh, feel your book will support the professionals navigating their journey in the cybersecurity world? It will support them through everything, especially what we're going through right, right now, because as I said before, I wrote this book in a government shutdown. I was uncertain. I didn't know when I was going to get a job. My funds was low. I was at a real crunch line where if I didn't get a job by, I think it was like, if I didn't get a job by the third week of April, 2019, that I was going to have to pack up my apartment and my doggy Buster in Virginia and move back home to Cleveland because that's how serious it was. So all this uncertain um, are such a thing that everybody's going through now. You don't know if you're going to get a job. You don't know how long. Maybe it's been one month, two months. Maybe it's been six months, nine months. How it was nine months? You're going to get through it. My book, I, like I said before, I give you my ups and downs. I give you the feedback I got from my interviews, the, the strategy I use to get all of my interviews. So from January Everything started running together now. <laughs> January 2019 to April 2019, I was on interviews back to back. So I was on a total of like 30 interviews and it was nonstop, like two, two interviews, three, inter three interviews a week. And I, I documented everything. So I documented the companies I reached out to. I documented how long it took them to get back to me. And I tell people this because you're not realizing you're looking for a job, but you can use that to your advantage. So on my resume, I turned my job search into a research project and I put it on my resume and I gave myself a role as a, I thought I said research project or cybersecurity researcher. And I documented the, the four month research project on unemployment, finding a job cybersecurity. I noticed that if I reach out to a recruiter, I will get a response maybe one or two days on LinkedIn. I will get an interview one week. Uh, if the company really wanted me, then I would get an offer or a contingent offer within a week. Sometimes it would take them two weeks. Sometimes they were ghosts. So during my interviews, I use, instead of focusing on a negative, so when the recruiter or the hire manager would ask you, well, what have you been doing this whole time? I would say, well, you know, I'm conducting research on finding employment and cybersecurity. And I also developed my blog where I share my journey through looking for a job in cybersecurity. And I would share advice along the way. And I would look up different articles within cybersecurity. And yes, this is showing them like, OK, even though this person is going through something, they're still positive. They're still learning about the field and they are just not focusing on, oh my God, I find a job, I gotta find a job, things like that. So as I tell everyone, use this negative and turn it into a positive. Exactly, exactly. Um, when you when you talk about in chapter four, uh, where to start in cybersecurity, for somebody uh, you know, brand new to cybersecurity, uh, just learning about it at let's say a conference, like like uh, in your in your case. And they're hearing about it for the first time. What are your initial recommendations for them to kind of become immersed in in in, in wrapping their minds around what the field is and what it has to offer? Okay. Well, first, I always plug everybody because, like I said, it's teamwork. First, and uh, chapter three, uh, which I mentioned, what cybersecurity means is that shout out to Doctor C again, <laughs> Doctor C has his definition about cybersecurity. I'm going to do very high level. So cybersecurity is uh, business, the business, the process, and then technology. Because a lot of people think cybersecurity is literally just hacking, and I'm going to sit behind a computer all day, I'm going to defend a network, and I have to be a hacker. But that's only one area of cybersecurity. So once they realize in chapter three, oh, Here's another definition of cybersecurity that I didn't even think about. And I probably actually had the transferable skills. I just didn't know 
Now I could get started in cybersecurity. So my advice for you to get started one, of course, read chapter three so you can understand the definition of cybersecurity and then to get started, my favorite document again <laughs> is the NIST 800-181 cybersecurity uh-huh. workforce publication, which I also did a course about that on my website, which is very high level. And I give everyone the breakdown of the whole document, very high level. I give you examples. So for instance, if you come from a law enforcement background, you actually have the skills to get a cybersecurity and you will fall in the investigate side of cybersecurity because you know how to gather evidence, you know how to write reports, you know how to conduct interviews with uh, criminals or family members. And those skills that you actually learn in the law enforcement background puts you into the investigate side. Now, depending on what type of role you might, you might have to pick up some programming skills because maybe you have to do some type of programming. So you might have to add some programming to to that role to be on the investigate side. Or if you like me, you come from an engineering background and my and my previous work experience, I'm on the oversee and governance side. So I'm on a non-technical side of things. I'm not doing any coding, no nitty gritty, hands on, let me look at a network or do vulnerability scans. I don't do any of that because that's not my area of expertise and that's not the route I went down. And that's the interesting thing is when someone initially hears cybersecurity and hears about this industry, they're initially thinking, you know, oh, uh, they're they're thinking like what what we saw uh, the series, Mr. Robot, right? The guy in the hoodie going around working for different agencies to hack into, you know, one organization or another to get some information, just, uh, uh, you know, tapping on the keys in the dark and, when you come when you come to the subject of governance, you know standards, policies, and procedures, that's a whole entirely uh, uh, looks like a entirely separate world, but it's hundreds of thousands of professionals in those roles, just like you described, not doing anything technical, but um, you know managing the standards, policies, and procedures, documentation, pretty much. Yes, and the funny thing is, is that. Nobody really likes documentation at all. (laughs) And I always say documentation is one of those tedious roles. Just document anything. I'm a person, I I like structure to a certain degree. I like structure. I like things that are in in a row. I like things to be aligned. Uh, Sometimes it would be a monkey wrench thrown in there every once in a while, but I know how to adjust accordingly depending on whatever happens at work. But they um cybersecurity have technical and non-technical sides and it doesn't matter your background you could get into it you yourself 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 you just have to have a confidence to yourself like okay first let me do some research these are skills i do have okay let me look at this document oh i actually fit in this area of cybersecurity i didn't even know so that's what i did and everything i'm doing now personally in my career path is still on the overseeing government side, I developed a course. So on the overseeing government side, a role is actually called, I think it's might be called cybersecurity curriculum developer or something like that. But I'm still aligned with the same path. I just now have different roles and, re- and other responsibilities, but I'm still in that same path. Right. Absolutely. And, um, for the uh, how do you, how do you bring the uh, aspect of defining your job search? So what do you do when you uh, work with someone and you're helping them to define the job search? What does that mean to define the job search? Yeah, so a lot of people when they look for a job, a lot of people I and I used to be like this too until I did some research. When we're desperate look for a job, we just go on Indeed, LinkedIn, and we just type in job titles. But what I realized is that when I looked at a business analyst, just a job title, business analyst could mean a gazillion things in different industries. 
a business analyst in the commercial side, just to say Microsoft, for instance, is completely different than a business analyst on a government side, which I'm a government contractor, so everything is different from commercial to government. And I actually did some research on, okay, let me figure out how to divide, define my job search because this is a hot mess and it's not working. So I found the article and the article listed three things. And they said to define, to define, I can't talk today, <laughs> to define your job search, the industry, the company, and then the role. So with me, industry, my industry and my job experience is government, defensive space, and aerospace, depending, because I used to work at Northrop Grumman, so airplanes and stuff. Then I will focus on the company. So you either want to ask yourself, do you want to be a big company, a mid-sized company, or a small company? And since I had experience at a big company and then a small company, in my job search, I ended up focusing on smaller companies. And in my industry, I focused on companies that dealt with defense space, aerospace, and sometimes information. Hey, Anthony, information technology services as the industry. And then smaller size, I focused on, I think it was maybe like 200 to 500. And I might go to 1,000. It depends. And then the role. So the role is the last thing because, as, as I tell people this all the time, do not focus on the job title. You really want to focus on what are they asking you to do in that role? Because as some of us know, as we all know, sometimes you will have five different roles or responsibilities for one job title. It could say security analyst, but when you read it, it, will, it, you, it could be a security analyst, a technical writer in there, Maybe sometimes it is though. It all depends. So when I actually did that way, my job search, my job search got a little bit easier and it was it was still stressful, but it was a tad bit less stressful. <laughs> less stressful when I went that route. So when I work with people, I, I always ask them, hey, do you know what type of industry you want to work in? Or if I'm looking at their resume and I see, oh, well. It seems like you worked in the healthcare industry a lot. Do you want to stay in the healthcare industry or do you see yourself going in a different industry? So I make sure they make sure they understand they have choices. And then I ask them about the different companies that they might want to work for, the company size, and then we and then we focus on the role. Okay. And uh before we progress, let's jump back to chapter two, the struggle. Because I'd like to know, uh, when you talk about the struggle, what do you feel in working with as many people as you've worked with so far? What seems to be the consistent struggle in making that transition into the cybersecurity field? Uh, the main struggle is people not having confidence in themselves and they doubt in themselves. And they also doubt in the skills, as I say all the time, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I'm trying to let y'all know. <laughs> you have the transferable skills. You have the transferable skills from, from the industry you're in now to get into cyber. And then also people are getting over, because honestly, it's a lot of resources out here and you will get overwhelmed if you just put a random question out there, like as some people always do. Okay, I want to get into cybersecurity, but I don't know where to start. So now you're going to get 15 million uh, responses and you're going to get confused. So I tell people, one, that's too vague of a of a question. The correct way is to tell people what you already researched. So you could say, hey, hey, you guys, I want to get into cybersecurity. This is what I found out so far. Here are some resources, but I'm still confused on this uh, this topic. Can you all help me? If you go that approach, you will get a better clear probably a better clear vision of okay i should start with this resource first but you definitely should start with my book first because i give you the blueprint already like it's, it's exactly already you're already laying it out right i'm already, why, I'm already why go anywhere else you know, why, why go anywhere else you know and i give you resources in my book that i use that you know that i help 
And I also, you know, I also share all my wonderful people out there. Uh, my nine, my nine wonderful cybersecurity professionals from all different backgrounds. I have a, a professor in there, military, entry level people, mid level season people from all different walks of life that share their story. And you probably could relate to someone in that story as well. And you could be like, oh, okay, I could do this too. Cause they did it. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. You miss, mentioned the military because I've worked with uh, many military uh, personnel, you know, people who are transitioning into civilian life from the military and not realizing that they're stepping into a market that is, is, is all over them, all about them, you know, especially with that military background, um, you know, and the, the things that they've worked on. Generally, people are coming from a communications background, which is easily transferable into the cybersecurity field. What has been your experience in working with those who are, are transitioning out of the military? Well, since I put support my military, shout out to y'all, all my military, all their different branches, I'm used to interacting with them all the time. So I'm able to understand the lingo, our branches, maybe except for the army, because I haven't supported them, but I can learn. <laughs> um, so I'm able to translate the military lingo into the private sector because they're not going to understand most of those acronyms. And an acronym, if you don't spell it out, it could mean something completely different in a commercial industry, private sector. So you definitely want to make sure that you spell out all your acronyms. And the job title is not going to transfer easily to the private sector as well. So maybe you was a chief. Okay, a chief, you're not going to find that if you're trying to go to Microsoft. So if you was a chief, it probably could translate to a manager or maybe a technical account manager, depending on what role you're looking for, that'll translate to that in the private side. So you have to work with someone like me, no, but work with someone that has the expertise and a cybersecurity background that knows how to think outside the box while helping you realize that, okay, I have, these are the military skills that I obtained and this is how I translate. I, it was last year. So last year I actually helped seven or eight. I actually helped eight people from the program that was out in Colorado and now I'm having a brain fart because I forgot uh, what the what the program is called. But anyways, I helped eight military people that was in the cybersecurity program. I was out in Colorado, and I was able to transfer their military skills and also correlate the cybersecurity coursework that they was doing in their resume. And all of them got jobs. I think two of them, two of them got jobs at Amazon. Someone got a job at General Dynamics, someone got a job somewhere else. So I was able to help them. I really was happy about that. That's significant. That's significant. Tell me about how you incorporate, because because this is an interesting uh, chapter you have here, the law of attraction for interviews. That sounds interesting. So tell me how you incorporate the law of attraction when it comes to interviewing. Yeah, so for me, I like that I get it this title, but no. But for me, uh, during this time, I always tell people it's, it's a mental thing. It's, it's going to be mind over matter. So as I said, I was on an emotional roller coaster. I mean, sometimes I would cry because I'm like, this is a bull crap. Why I don't have a job? I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. So with me, I had to get out my little funk. You know, it was it took me like a, I, I admit it took me a month. I was like, this is some bull crap. And then I got out of it and I said, okay, well, let me think of some positive ways to help me along the way. So every morning, literally every morning, what I do is I would still get up like I had a job. So I would still get up at 7.30. I would try to have a routine. So I would get up, let my doggy out, would feed him, let my doggy out. And I would get on Pinterest and look up positive affirmations to start my day. Most of the time, because since I was job searching, I would look up positive affirmations for job job seekers. I would look at that quote in the morning, say it out loud, get my day started, and then I would do my job search. So I would job search 
Um, I want job search every day. I would text and brace because the jobs are still going to be there. So I'll probably job search Monday, maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday job search. Now, my approach was different and mine was tedious, but it gave me results. What I would do is before I will apply to the job, I will find the job. I will go on LinkedIn, do some research about the company. I will find a recruiter that's active, like an active recruiter that you see post a lot, the activity is good. And I will send an email and I will first do some research on a company, see if it's anything that stand out about that company that I could see myself working there. Because I knew I needed a job, but I also was focused on the company culture because I got screwed over too many times in my career where I had managers that would not look out for me. Oh, we're going to help you find another job. No, you're not. Or people that would throw me up under the bus, not literally, but throw me up under the bus, coworkers, just working in a real toxic environment. And I said, for my next job, I'm not dealing with that anymore. So let me really focus on a company culture. So I'll focus on a company culture. I'll find something, maybe the company, get back to the community. That's something I like to do. Okay, I can see myself working here. And then I will find a job that fit my skill set. And then I would reach out to the recruiter and I said, hey, I was doing, I was because of a job search and I really was intrigued by your company. And I see that you are a volunteer. I'm really good at volunteering. And I found this job that I would like to discuss more. Don't send your resume right away. Ask, uh, can I possibly send you my resume? Please let me know. And then I will get a recruiter at least two days to get back to me because sometimes recruiters, maybe they got a lot of inbox, you never know. So I will get them two days, wait to see what they would say. And then I will get a screen interview with the recruiter. Of course, they like me because I I was on a whole bunch of interviews by then. And then I would go to the hiring manager interview. And I just kept doing that pace. Yes, I was tired. I was drained. But my victory had finally ended in May of 2019 when I finally got my job. Actually, from referral, this is another topic. Referrals will help you as well. So my last stop shop was on LinkedIn. I had posted my resume. And I, and I strictly said, this is what I do not have time for. This is what I already did. I need a job like yesterday, not today. <laughs> but anyway, this guy has saw my job posting. He saw my resume. He reached out to me. He sent his information and my comment. I didn't know this guy from a can of paint. And that referral got me a job. And that's how I ended my, my journey. Or job searcher. It sounds like uh, it sounds like you discovered your worth, especially in, in the way uh, you know, you you put your demands out there, you know, and you and you put your you you had standards. So you weren't even though you were looking for work, you wasn't in the position of trying to. You didn't go at it as uh, trying to take anything that was handed to you. You were being specific, especially when you talk about uh, company culture, because you had those uh, those bad experiences. Let's uh let's take one of the uh questions from uh Adafe. So he says, uh hi Katia, please reiterate how you do how how do I explain a prolonged unemployment on my resume? Okay, so depending on how long it, okay, so for instance, I'll give you my example. So I technically was unemployed for nine months. So I was I was at like a nine month gap. And what I had did was I created my blog. So I put my blog on my resume and I gave myself a job title of cybersecurity blogger. And I would put my website. So because I gave myself that job title, the recruiter's like, oh, can you tell me what a cybersecurity blogger is? I never heard of that. Can you tell me what that's about? And that was my conversation starter. So let's just say you're doing projects, you're, you're learning some Udemy courses, library. If you're doing any projects outside while you're still looking for a job, I will list those projects on your resume and that's your positive in this negative situation. So you can say, well, even though I'm looking for a job, I wrote in some Udemy courses, 
about, I want, I, I'm really interested just to say a stock analyst. So you enrolled in a stock analyst course. So I enrolled in a stock analyst course on Cyberary. So I'm learning more cybersecurity skills while I'm looking for a job. And that's your advantage to filling up that gap because you're adding experience. Now I will say this, and it depends on the company, the hiring managers, all that put together. Some people recognize the coursework, some do not. But if you know how to, I'm going to say, sell yourself, then use that to your advantage. And selling yourself is a, is a practice. I had to learn it when I was on 18 million resumes, I mean resumes, 18 million interviews. I was basically a pro. Well, I'm still a pro. No, uh, I'm still a pro. I was able to pick up the patterns of the recruiters and high managers and how the process would go, would go because I was on so many interviews. So I hope that answered your question. And uh, that's that's pretty significant. I think that's uh, that that's uh, what I consider advanced strategies right there. You know, uh, because that's not a traditional thought, right? Uh, traditionally, what we think is, okay, only thing that is valid is work that we're being paid for. And that's usually what people are used to counting. So everyone kind of discards all the additional things that they do outside of work, even when it's, uh, you know, it could be volunteering in an online group. Uh, it could be volunteering in a cybersecurity group like InfoSec 101 as one of the moderators. Um, mm -hmm. I've had people who uh, moderate in the group who have come back and told me, hey, I was able to discuss my, my moderation practices and how they were, uh, you know, over the months and years supporting other cybersecurity professionals through their moderation, um, how they were able to use that and leverage that to land another, a new role. So these are the, the, the strategies, like you said, of promoting yourself and not allowing any of that experience to go to waste. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, a home lab and, and someone having a home lab. Have you have you uh, talked to anyone who's used a home lab and leveraged that in an interview? Yes, um, I had one client. He told me how he built a home lab and he told me all the equipment he had to get. So I said, okay, well, this is your advantage. You are actually learning about your network. Excuse me, your network security, like what type of network security skills you're learning. You're doing, you had to do research on the type of equipment you needed. What type of resources did you use to figure out what type of equipment you had to you had to use for your home lab? Of course, you had to take probably some courses, or you're interested in some courses. What courses did you enroll in? And you could just add that as a project sec project section on your resume and use that to your advantage. Exactly. And then um wanted to talk about uh, the mentor mentee. I know you touched on that in the beginning. And you touched on how the the importance of it, uh, especially in your case. So, at what point do you recommend someone to start looking for a mentor in this uh, cybersecurity career journey? Now, <laughs> ASAP, right? Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if you are a freshman, a freshman in college. Look now. If you high school, look now. And these kids smart middle school I, now <laughs> don't wait to the last minute okay don't ASAP. wait to the last minute asap but remember right, as i right. always say you have to put in the work as well so absolutely and and uh what, what would you say is the important uh points when it comes to putting in work for the mentee what is what should that look like oh yeah so i have I hope so many people, but I have a few mentees that I'm so proud of and they are younger than me. So they like my little kids, but, um, but I'm so proud of them because they actually take my advice and, and I'm, and I'm just so happy. But anyway, they actually take my advice and implement what I say. Not just, I'm not just telling you anything. And what I like about them is that they go out their way, they conduct their research and they say, Hey, can I I was conducting research. My one mentee, she's, interested in smart cities. And she's like, hey, KT, I thought about this idea about smart cities. What do you think? I said, well, you know, I really don't have too uh, too much expertise on smart cities. Let me see if I could 
reach out to my connections about someone who knows about smart cities and make that connection. You could reach out to them so you can have more understanding of the smart city because this is what you're interested in. So to me, if you're researching, give me the resources that you're we're researching about and then you ask me questions, that's showing me the initiative. You're going out there, you're passionate, you're going out there, you're doing your research because I can't just give you the answer. Well, one, I'm not going to give you the answers. I'm not. I'm not going to give you the answers. I'm not going to just, well, here you go. Here you go. No, because to me, you're not putting in any work and you're not conducting research because I always say people normally ask what's a number, like what's a skill you need to have in cybersecurity? And I say research because the answers are not going to be there. Your manager, and I had this happen to me all the time. My manager would ask me something maybe from six months ago three months ago. And the answer is not going to be there. I have to research. I probably have to go back in the archives and, and, and research some documents. I don't even know where they are, folders. I have no idea where they're at. So I have to research because the answer is not going to be there. So research is, I think, a good skill to have. You was mute. Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm, I'm struggling with my technology here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Good. And uh, you know what? One of the one of the cool sides of mentoring that I've noticed is uh, the people who you mentor. They go out into the industry and they start doing some cool work, and the 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 mentor mentee relationship doesn't stop. Like it continues on for years, years and years. Um, I've had uh, one of my mentees went to work for the city of Atlanta. So during uh, that whole breach where the where the city was on lockdown, I was getting messages like, "Hey, uh, uh, hey, what what do I do? Should I go to the uh, to the city CEO? And uh, you know, what what do I tell him? You know." <laughs> so I, I I was able to be a part of that and giving like step by step strategies. I'm like, "Okay, go to him. Here's what you say." Um, you know, so that was pretty cool to to help someone to you know, achieve that level of a role. And then when a major breach that hits the news happen, they're reaching out in the DMs like, hey, I need your help. Um, and also, um, I had another uh, mentee who who went to work for Google and she worked on, uh, she went to work for Google's app store. And then, you know, being able to hit me up while she's right there with the team, like, here's the, here's, here's what we're working on today. Here's, here's some of the, um, the, the, the strategy that we're rolling out at Google to minimize apps that are junk or apps that are, you know, um, look like uh, that they're, they're, they're morphing to Trojans and hacks that are caught wreaking havoc on Android phones. So, you know, pretty cool things like that, where you keep these relationships and you get to see the folks who you've helped go out and do great things out in the community and the industry. Absolutely. So um, uh, we, we're going to get ready to uh, wrap up. But before that, I like what you said about cybersecurity is for everyone in chapter eight. So when you say everyone, do you mean everyone? Yes, Tell me a little every, bit about that. Yes, everyone. Cyber, no. No, cyber is for everyone. I named it that chapter because after that chapter, you would read everyone's story and realize no one, everybody came from a different background. I have, like I said, I had someone that was in the military. I had someone that did not graduate high school, but they were self-taught. They still got into cybersecurity. Um, I think that digital forensics and got into a higher manager role, a teacher, professors, nurse, a nurse, everybody from all different backgrounds, me, engineering background, art, graphic. So for instance, I'm um, gonna put out there, if you are a web developer and you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not in cybersecurity, you actually are. You are, I'm going back to my document, but <laughs> I can do it like the back of my head. That's how you know I did too many times. But if you are a web developer, you will be in the security provision area of cybersecurity and you will fall under software development because you know about coding, not a right code, you gotta, do a whole bunch of stuff. So you actually are in cybersecurity and that's how you use the transfer of a skill. So cybersecurity is for everybody. You just have to know 
where your skills align and have confidence in yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, before we wrap up, I want to make sure that people know how to find you and where to find you. What do you, where do you want people to find you at on uh, LinkedIn or your website? If you go on my website, my LinkedIn, it will give, get you right to my LinkedIn. But if you do request me on LinkedIn, please, please, please leave a note. Say, hey, KT, I saw your live session with with you today on you know Cyber Career Strategy TV. I'll be more than likely to accept your request because I just have too many lingering around. And most of the time, I just, sometimes I deny them because I really want to build connections. I'm not really about the numbers. The numbers don't really matter to me. I actually want to see you grow or help you as well. So you could reach me LinkedIn. Also follow me on Twitter, which is KTS Style Life. And then also on Instagram, KTS Style Life as well. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to make sure that I put that up on the screen as well. Um, while I put those links up, go ahead and give some, uh, some parting. What are the takeaways that you would, um, want someone who's new to cybersecurity or just wrapping their mind around the cybersecurity world, what, what what do you want them to take away from this uh, interview? The most important thing, if they didn't hear anything else. Oh, my book. No, I'm defending me that. <laughs> no. Uh, no, actually, no, I say that but it is my book. So the struggle is real, but you will have your victory at the end you will get a lot of no's before you get a yes. And make sure you remain positive and your your light, your light is coming at the end of that storm because I went through it, I made it, and you can make it too. Absolutely, I like it, I like it. I appreciate you uh, being available this evening for the show. It's a, it's a, it's a late show, so I'm always thankful when someone, uh, you know, carves out time and an hour in their evening to be on the show. So I'm going to go ahead and close out from here. And uh, thanks a lot. Have a wonderful night. Thanks, everybody. All right, folks. So you've had it. You heard it from the pro herself, Katia Dean. And uh, her book, The Struggle is Real. Go ahead and grab yourself a copy. She has a lot of wisdom nuggets to share, especially if you're getting started in cybersecurity. And you just need that blueprint. Like she said, you know, the blueprint, she lays it out when to get the mentor, um, what cybersecurity the field is all about, how to connect, how to uh, interview. It's all in there, folks. So go ahead and grab yourself a copy. And uh, we'll, we will be back in two weeks with another professional. Also, I will put additional links to uh, uh, KT's Instagram as well as her Twitter in the uh in the comment section right after we end this uh broadcast uh until i see you all again in two weeks have a wonderful night or a wonderful evening or a wonderful morning wherever you are in, in the world also also feel free to join the uh facebook group infosec 101 that is infosec 101 and that is the cybersecurity career strategies group let me let me uh, go ahead and make a link for that uh, Facebook InfoSec 101. So search for this in the Facebook groups. All right, I'll go ahead and throw that up. All right, folks, have a great evening.